The question is asked, who am I? Do you know who you are? It's a very, very important question. But before we delve into this reality, just join with me as we acknowledge our Lord's presence. <clears throat> our Father, we are so grateful, O oh Lord, to be in your presence once again, collectively, because you promised that you will never leave us nor forsake us. But individually, dear Father, as we are not together with one another in the flesh, we know that you have bind us together by your Spirit, because we are one family in Christ Jesus. Because you have begotten us again unto a lively hope by his resurrection from the dead. And because of this reality, O oh Lord, we can feel the reality of you living in us as we experience the joy of salvation as it is in Christ. As you work upon our hearts, O oh Lord, I pray that as you ask us to open our mouths wide that you might fill it. Not just our mouths, Lord, but every fiber of our being. That you can work through our hands, our hearts, our lips, our feet, O oh Lord. That this earth will be lightened with your glory. And that men may know that truly our Savior is alive and well. Yeah. We thank you, Father, for being with us and for hearing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> As I ask the question, who am I? The thought came back to me of the prodigal son. We all know the story of the prodigal son, right? That he took his possession from his father and he went away. When he recognized the folly of his ways, he said something. I will go to my father. I don't consider myself no longer a son. And will go and desire even to be a servant to get some benefits from him. So who have a problem, the father or the son? The son. The father knew exactly that he's my son. But the son don't even recognize that he's still a son and will forever be a son. Are we suffering from that same problem because of sin? We consider ourselves still alienated from God, not recognizing that God has begotten us again unto a lively hope through Christ Jesus. So we are no more enemies, but sons of God. Now, if we accept this reality, who am I? Who am I? Could Christ be tempted with a history of sin? Could Christ be tempted with a history of sin? No. What was he tempted on? What was his greatest challenge? When Lucifer came to him, what was his argument? If you are what? Okay. Okay. If you are the son of God, Command these stones to turn to bread. Lucifer knew who Christ was. But you know what happened? Something happened to Christ. He takes on humanity. So do you still maintain that identity? Are you still the son of God? No, you partake of humanity. Humanity is now merged with divinity. Are you still the son of God? Your identity is in question. Are you the son of God? Is the reverse true? 
a verse. That we, born in sin, shaped in iniquity, knows nothing else but just mere human. Being born again of the Spirit, become a part of the body of Christ, have a history of sin. Are you a child of God or are you a sinner? What is your identity? Your identity also is in question. Being born of the Spirit, are you a sinner? Or are you the Son of God? Remember this question. Nicodemus came to Christ and he said, I know that these things that you're doing cannot be done unless God is with you. And Christ said to him, Nicodemus, if you're not born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Christ said something that blows Nicodemus' mind. To be born of the Spirit, what is this? The only thing I know is when you sin, you take a lamb or a turtle dove, you take it to the temple, you offer sacrifice, you do whatever. No, here's come this man saying, you have to be born again. What are you talking about? He that is born of flesh is flesh. He that is born of the spirit is spirit. You must be born again. So, no, you are born again. Who are you? Are you still a sinner? Or are you the son of God? What is your identity? So, you have to be born again. That's the first step. But this birth takes place through faith. Which is the only thing that can please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And through faith, you are born again. So both goes together. Now, we are in a crisis. We don't know who we are. We don't. Do you believe that you were born in sin? Or born as a sinner? Do we believe that? How do we know that? How do we know that? We are not confident. How do we know that we were born sinners? The God says so. Okay. Exactly. Okay. But here Christ said we must be born again. Right? Now the question is. Are you born again? Has God begotten us again? By the death and very life of his son. Are we? Yes. Okay. Do you believe that? Do you really believe that you're born again? Because I can tell you of a truth that is so easy for us to say, I'm a sinner. But to say that I'm born again and I'm a child of God, look, I, I say it with, 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 with a little uncertainty. I'm not sure. But it's the same word that say you're a sinner. The same word say you're born again and you're a son of God. So can we believe God at one point and when it comes to the point where truly I'm a son of God, I cannot believe it? So what is my reason for being here? What is my expectation in coming here? What do I have to give just to hear another sermon? Some good teaching? Some dissecting of the scriptures? Better understanding? Yet still, the Bible says this planet is longing for the manifestation of the sons of God. And if we are not willing to be in that bond, that bond of people who are walking testimonies of Christ, then what do we expect to see?
The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, to one man, sin enter the world, and death by sin. The reverse is true. To one man, life has come. And if we can accept the reality of death coming through one man, why can't we accept the reality of life coming through that one man? I am a son of God. If I don't know my identity, I cannot live my reality. I cannot be a sinner and at the same time be a saint. I think Brother Howard mentioned this morning of a, a sinner saint. I don't know how you work out that one. Yes, a Christian sinner. How, how do you work out that one? A Christian sinner. You're either a sinner or a Christian. Not a professor. If you are professing, you have professed long enough. It's a time for us to live our reality. We are waiting for something special to happen. But I want you to know one thing. The enemy of souls is not waiting for anything special to happen. He's on a mission from day one until now. Until the end of time, he has one objective. Not one soul should be saved. And God is in the business of saving souls. So God is in the business of not one soul should be lost. And when Christ, before he left this planet, he said, look, you are my witnesses. Go. But Howard quote this verse this morning. He said, the word of this life. Go and preach the word of this life. We believe that the kingdom has come. We believe that we are children of the kingdom. I make mention of the fact that the Bible says in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we are ambassadors for Christ. What do we represent? We are witnesses of what? An ambassador represent his country. You know, I woke up one morning and the Lord gave me a verse. And when I took up the Bible and I read it, I could not help it but bring it to my wife's attention and say, look at this. <clears throat> Just turn with me to 1 John chapter 4. I'm going to read from verse 15 down to 17. It says, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth where? And he in God. And we have known and believe the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth it in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we. In where? Has he is present tense, right? Can you imagine who Christ is today, this moment, this hour? Can you imagine? When he came from the grave and he met the disciples, he said to them, All power in heaven and earth is given unto me. So what do you think Christ possessed today? All power. And he said, as he is, so are we in this world. Just try and wrap your mind around that statement. As Christ is, so are we 
in this world today. Present tense. So where are the strange men? Because the disciples were strange men. Because when Christ came to living them, they became strange men. Peter, who didn't know his identity, didn't want to be even identified with Christ because he said, I don't know the man. I walked with him for three years and it came to that point, he said, I don't know the man. But yet still, Christ said after, when you are converted, strengthen the brethren. When Peter recognized his true identity, when Pentecost came, Christ said, strengthen the brethren. This same Peter said, look, you think it is by me that you see this man walk? Is the same Jesus whom you have crucified. Peter recognized his identity. He knew who he was. Because Christ now lives in him. And the Bible said, as Christ is, so are we in this world. When we know our identity. When we can confess this reality. And walk in it and live in it then the world will see the manifestation of the sons of God. Can we live here not recognizing who we are? Should we? As I said, we have a history. And because of this history, the enemy continues to throw these darts at us. And many times we say, you know, I'm not so sure because I used to and I was and I so because of this we don't have that confidence but let me tell you something the devil is a liar and will always be a liar know your reality and walk in that reality because we read the story of the woman with the alabaster box right and we preach sermons on it. But you ever remember this story? Turn with me to Luke chapter 17. In this story, <clears throat> sorry, Luke 7, sorry. <clears throat> I'm going to read from verse 36. It says, And one of the Pharisees desired him, which is Christ, that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet, behind him weeping and begun to wash his feet with her tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touched him, for she is a sinner. Lucifer speaking through this man. He invited Christ, the Son of God, to his home. Because he believed that he was worthy. Right? So Christ went. Here come this woman whom Christ has done marvelous things for before. And she knew what she had become. And she went and did all of this to Christ. But the only thing that this man can see is that she is a sinner. But Christ knew that she was a sinner. Not is. She was. Because she's a new person. And this is how the enemy attacked us. He used our history. And he tried to discourage us. Brother Ken mentioned this morning of what the demon said. 
of Brother David to shatter his faith, to destroy his identity and his confidence in God. We are challenged with the same thing. But do we maintain our identity and say, look, this is what God say I am and I'm going to live by this. You're a liar. No. If we're not going to believe God, then give up Christianity. Give up Christianity. Because look, Today, we have denominations upon denominations upon denominations. And the world is plunging further and further into darkness and unbelief. All of this happened, why? Because of you and me. We have nothing, nothing to show that truly we are the sons of God. Because we don't even believe that we are truly the sons of God. We don't. I went to a meeting some years ago, and it was at a church. And the elder said, look, we are struggling. Prayer meeting not taking place. Bible study not happening. Why? The members are saying the violence, they cannot come to church meeting. Satan is stopping the people of God from having prayer meeting. When at the same time, we would come to church and said, Our Father is King of the universe. All power in heaven is His. And it has been given unto us. But we can't go to prayer meeting because of some gunmen. We can't. So, in this scenario, Satan is a winner. Because God's people can't even worship God because Satan runs things. You build your house and you're not going to move in it unless it grill. Because you have to secure yourself first. Because of what? Satan running riot. And you are the son of God. How you explain these things? How you expect a person out there having his own way to even believe anything of Christianity? When the Christians are living just like anybody else. Examine yourself. Ask yourself the question, who am I? Who am I? And if you cannot answer that question, I said, look, if you don't have faith, if you are not born again, then where are you? Because if you confess that I have faith and I'm born again, then who are you? What is my life worth? We'll come back next year. We'll hear this. Maybe some more brighter ideas. We may hear the scripture dissect much deeper. And we will left here, leave here. And you know what will happen? Life goes on the same way. For another year. Two years. Of living the life of an unbeliever professing to believe nothing else nothing else do you know that as much as we fail to recognize our identity even the devil himself will identify a son of God even the devil the devil. Turn with me <clears throat> to Acts chapter 19.
I'm going to read from verse 11. It says, And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs, or aprons, and the disease departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. And there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jew, and a chief of the priest, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know. And Paul I know. But who are you? Who are you? Are any of us in here in this position? We can talk about Paul. We can talk about Peter. We can talk about James and John. They have done their part. They are resting. They have finished their course. You and I are living at the end of time. That I believe they themselves thought that they were living in that time. But you and I today, God said, in our day and age, we'll see the greatest manifestation of his power upon this earth. That in, apost in the apostolic age is foolishness compared to this time. And we are not sure today, this hour, who we are. Could you give me a time when you think we might recognize who we are? Anyone? Have any idea? After this, <laughs> brothers and sisters, let me tell you. It is easy for us to accept our past life and say that we are sinners saved by grace, hoping that one day we will be what God wants us to be. One day. But yet still, the Bible says, No! You are washed. You are sung everything. No! But we are looking for something to happen down the road. While God says no. If we cannot believe in our state this hour, when will we? If I should ask, are you a believer? You would say yes. But yet still you are not certain of who you are. How you reconcile both. We became sinners by birth. You become a saint by birth. The same process. In the first Adam, we have an inherited life. And in that life, there's nothing good. And we have seen it, right? The reverse must be true. That if we are born again, there's an inheritance also. So if we are born of the Spirit, we inherit the very life of Christ. In that life, is everything that is good. In that life, all power is given to him. And if we possess that life, we have that power and authority also. Amen. We have it. So what are we going to do? Be like those who Christ said, if you have a candle, don't light it and put it under a bushel. Are we satisfied with just the mere fact that, huh? I'm baptized, I'm saved, I have salvation. You're satisfied with that? Are you satisfied with the fact that I'm saved? Or do you really want to be a credible witness? 
Where God said, I will live in them. I'll walk in them. I'll be their God and they shall be my people. Do we want that reality? Do we want to live in that reality? The Bible says through faith, we believe that the worlds were made. It says through faith, Enoch did great things. Through faith, all these things happened. Through faith, and then it went on to say, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And every one of us here will say, I have faith because it is true faith. Why I went and get baptized. So are you satisfied with watery baptism? When John said, I baptize you with water, but one cometh after me that going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. What about that baptism? Have you received it? Then have you re- if, you are, if you have received that baptism, who are you? Are you still just a mere human? Or truly, are we the sons of God? It is interesting to note that Paul, of all persons that we talk about a lot, <clears throat> his identity also come in question. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 1 that as Paul made mention of his experience, Paul said something that is fascinating. Paul said in Galatians chapter 1 from verse 13, For you have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion. How oh, that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. And profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals. In my own nation being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my father. But when it pleased God, who had separated me from my mother's womb, then called me by his grace. For what purpose? To reveal his son in me. How do you reveal Christ? How do you reveal Christ? By talking about Christ? By telling someone that God have a son. His name is Jesus. That's how you reveal Christ? How do you live Christ? So how did Christ live his life? By sitting down and wondering, am I the son of God? Or, when he said to that Samaritan woman, I am he. You're looking for the Messiah? I am he. He knows his identity. But yet still, Paul says, when it pleased God, who had separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, I confer not with flesh and blood. I am in a totally different sphere. This is something different. I'm not a mere human. Just like how the woman could touch the hem of Christ's garment. The Bible says they took handkerchief and aprons from these brethren. And did these things also. Because Christ was living his life again. Through these men. Is the same reality we have been called to. It was not only for Paul. It was not only for Peter. It was not only for James and John. Peter himself said, as many as believe, as many as believe and come to him, they will have the same experience. So, we don't know identity. We are truly not sure of who we are. What do you think is the problem? God? Is God the problem? 
Or is that little thing of what the Bible says, that evil heart of unbelief? That evil heart of unbelief. Think about this. God called out a people. And he said, I'm going to establish something. I'm going to use these people as an incubator to bring forth my son. So he preserved them. They went into bondage and he preserved them. He brought them out. He was with them as a pillar of, day, pillar of, 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 of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. He parted the Red Sea. He did all these things. And they reached a place. And what happened? God called me a visible leader and said, come, let me talk to you. These people said, look, this man gone, we don't know where he is. Let us do our thing. You want to tell me that with all this experience, they forget how God has led them in through the wilderness experience. And we came to this place where we need to trust God. And the only thing we can think of, let us make ourselves an image. We see the visible manifestation of the power of God. And not even that can convince us that look, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We could not wait because we don't believe. And these people today, many of us want to model our life of these people. I'm telling you that. We want to be like the Jews. We want to practice everything like the Jews. We want, and we don't recognize that these Jews we're living so much in unbelief that when the Messiah was born, God have to call some man when I have anything Amen. to know about him and say, look, see a star here? My son is in Bethlehem. The same people who were looking for the Messiah, who God has preserved to bring forth his son through, did not even recognize that he is here. One little old man took up this child and said, Lord, I have seen your glory. While they will learn the people who have the head knowledge. Who could quote the prophecies. Who could tell you everything that Isaiah had said. Didn't recognize that here is the savior of the world. So okay. We learn the truth about God. We learn righteousness by faith. We have prophecy inside out. And we have all these things. Do we want to find ourselves in the same position? Of knowing. But yet still not believing. Knowing all this. Can give you a good Bible study. Tell you everything about the fact that. Okay. Jesus Christ is the son of God. And we tell you what the Holy Spirit is. And we can tell you that righteousness is in Christ. And we can give you all the things that we need to know that is necessary for salvation. But yet still you don't believe in that word of what you are teaching? Is that possible? When the Son of God came and walked this earth, you know what happened? The same people who he came to bless. The same people who he came to bless. The same people who were priests and high priests and all these things. Kaifa said, look, it is better for one man to die than for a whole nation to perish. Not even knowing what he was saying. Right? Now after his death, they went back to Pilate and said, look, we remember what this deceiver has said. That he will destroy this temple and raise it up in three days. So listen, seal the tomb, 
put some guards there because we don't. Listen, you know, it is strange that these people never believe a word that Christ was saying, but yet still they want to secure the tomb. Why? If you never believe, why you want to secure the tomb? Because this deceiver say going to destroy this temple and raise it up in three days. So if you don't believe, you kill him and you bury him, everything all right. Why you want to seal the tomb and put God there? You see, that's the way of the enemy. I tell you, Lucifer, he knew these things. That the death of Christ was not enough for our salvation. The resurrection was critical. He knew it. But the professed people who have all these prophecy, prophecies did not know, know and they did not believe. But yet still, Lucifer knew. So Lucifer said, secure it. Secure it. And truly, they did. But you know what? Death could not hold him. Death could not hold him. He had destroy sin and death. Not tomorrow. Not next year. He has destroyed death and sin forever. And in that life is a life of victory over all the powers of the enemy. And he said here, it is yours. And if we believe and accept that reality, then who are we in this world? The Bible says, as he is a victorious savior, so are we in this world. But yet still, we are still in an identity crisis. Not knowing who we are. Not knowing whether or not we are a sinner or a saint. And why is this so? Because the enemy continued to bombard us with our past. And we believe Satan more than how much we believe God. So we no longer walk by even faith. Where the Bible says the only thing that pleased God. But we are walking by sight. We are walking by sight. You see if Peter. Was to walk on water. Based upon what he was seeing. It would have never happened. But Peter said something. If it is you. Bid me to come to you under the water. On the water. What did Christ say? That's it. And Peter did what? Okay. So Peter walked because Christ said, Come. He walked on the word of Christ. When he started to look on his circumstances, the sea started to roar and this happened. What happened? He forgets so that Christ said, Come. And he start looking at him circumstances and his situation. It's the same thing the enemy did to us. So when you kneel down to pray, everything to come in your head. Lord, I decide that. And you're more thinking of confession, of sins, more than to think of who you are. You start to focus on your past. More than who am I in Christ. What God has made me to be in Christ. Don't trust even your own intellect. Don't trust it. The Bible tells you, he said, Curse is a man that trusted in man and make flesh his arms. You think it's about trusting in an ex brethren? It's about trusting even in your own self. You can't. Because your very eyes will deceive you. You ever have something in your hands and looking for it? Okay. You ever have on your glasses and trying to find it? Okay. Don't trust that. Dear you to trust even yourself. That's why the man who come to God must die. Must. 
Because there is nothing good in the natural man. Nothing. Not even to think straight. We have to die that Christ might live. And when Christ is living, Christ is not uncertain of who he is. Christ knows who he is. And truly, if we are born of the Spirit, and if we are living by faith, we must know our identity. We must. And we don't walk on the street and behave like people who have no hope. The world must see a difference. Must. But if we follow the conventional methods and teachings of the so-called denominations, whatever they might be, we will never believe the word of God. I can tell you that. Notice that every man who walk with God are considered a rebel. Notice it. Might seem strange. Every single man that walk with God is considered a rebel. They always seem to be causing problems. They become enemies of society. Christ said it. Christ said the world will hate you because of what? Me. The world will hate you because of me. Does the world hate you? Or we don't reach that place yet? When Christ is manifested in you, the world will hate you. Brother Howard made mention of it this morning. He said, look, when the sick is healed, when the dead raise, mark lockdown, hospital in trouble, you will become a problem. You will. Must. Because Christ was a problem. The disciples were problems. And every man that we can think of or read about, they were a problem. Because Christ started to live his life again. And because that is not happening now, we are at peace. We are at peace. I'm telling you. We are at peace. Sometime it will take fire for us to move. Sometimes you hear the focus in these last days is about the mark of the beast. That is the primary thing that you hear now in the conventional Christianity. The mark of the beast. And everybody is watching what the Pope is doing. If the Pope sneezes, everybody gets cold. That is what is happening. But yet still, can you find that in the Bible as pertaining to this whole thing is what will manifest itself so much that people will be converted? No. Christ said, this gospel of the kingdom if the mark of the beast is the gospel of the kingdom, go preach it. Go live it. But this gospel of the kingdom must be preached. And as Brother Howard said this morning, it's not about Jesus is the son of God. It's about living the kingdom. Living the kingdom. This is the greatest sermon that you can preach. Not a person come and Stand up before you on a pulpit and preach. No. The greatest sermon that can be preached is a life that Christ is living through. Amen. And when this is preached, then you will see who is on the Lord's side or who is on the other side. That is what is going to distinguish between those who serve God and those who serve him not. I'm telling you. Because we focus so much on this religious aspect of what is to come. But no, in this world you will find two classes of people. Those who love God, those who hate God. You're not going to find professed Christianity. Because that will be a thing of the past. 
Because you always hear people say, pressure bus pipe. Fire going to show where you stand. You get what I'm saying? And this gospel, this gospel of the kingdom is going to be a distinguishing mark. Because look, notice what Christ says. Christ said, if you have not my spirit, you are none of mine. And when you possess this life, there are certain things that will manifest itself. So it is this life that is going to be the distinguishing mark. Whether you possess his life or you're on the other side. That's the reality. So focus on the mark of the beast. You can. No problem. But make sure that it finds its place in the gospel of the kingdom. Because if it, is don't, if it don't find its place there, you're not preaching the gospel. Because tell me what good news you have to give to anybody as pertaining to the mark of the beast. What good news is in that? Is there salvation in the mark of the beast? Salvation is only in Christ. And it's only in the gospel of the kingdom that Christ is seen. Nowhere else. He is our savior. His blood speaks forever. That life that has came to this planet, joined the human race. God has lost a son forever. Believe it. Because he's one of us. Forever. He's not like what he was before. He's a divine human. And so he has made us to be. And because of this, we can rejoice in this blessed hope of what God has made us to be in his son. This is our reality. Let us live it. Let us live it, not talk it, but demonstrate it. Any new vehicle that you buy, the first thing they tell you, test drive. Test drive. So if you are a new creation, test it. Try it. Let us see if truly you are a new creation. Christ was put to the test because he was asked if you are the son of God. Peter was asked. Paul was asked. Mary was put to the test. The prodigal son never knew his identity, but his father knew that he was always his son and will forever be his son. We are the sons of God. If you don't know it, talk to God about it. Because he has made you to be so in his son. Not of yourself. In his son. Accept that life if you don't. And if you do, live it. Live that life. Brothers and sisters, by God's grace, I don't believe that tomorrow or the next day is promised to anyone. This is the moment that we have. This is the moment. Don't put off salvation. Don't. This is the moment that we have. There are so many people, so many stories that I, I heard where there were so many plans for tomorrow. So many plans for next week. Not one of them fulfilled. Because you perish. Yeah. Don't plan for tomorrow. Live for today. Live for today. Don't say when I leave here, then I'm going to. Start now. Start now. God is not stuck concerning his promise. The day that we start believing... 
because of unbelief, we have our umbrellas up. Hoping that rain falls. But even when the rain is falling, our umbrella is up, so we are not wetting. We're not getting any wet. Because our umbrellas are up because of unbelief. Take down the umbrellas. Be showered with God's blessing. All of his blessings are in Christ. And if you receive it, then you'll see it. Think on these things. Thanks for your time. Let us pray.